find a nice, comfortable place to sit or lie down. Maybe in your own bedroom or maybe on the sofa. Allow your eyes to gently close and focus on your breathing. Just let all your troubles just float away. So, take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. Again, take another deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out. One last time, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out. Now bring your breathing back to its normal rhythm and just relax, letting all your thoughts just drift away. Now imagine yourself being in a wide open space. The sky is a beautiful blue with hardly any clouds at all and the sun is at its highest. And the grass around you looks all velvety and soft. And as you walk along, you trip over a large tree root, which is odd really, because there are no trees around you. They are only in the distance. You get back up and brush yourself down. And you notice something shining through the grass on the ground. It looks like there's a pulsating light underneath the grass. How odd. This light is pulsating so much, it looks, well, almost alive. Kind of how a beating heart might look. The shimmering light is actually a portal. Maybe it's a portal to another place in time and space. So you walk over to the light to take a look at it. And it's then that the light suddenly shoots upwards and you find yourself being pulled into it. It is a doorway to somewhere else. How exciting. You find yourself sliding down on an underground water slide circling round and round, going faster and faster. This is really great fun. You can see lots of colours flashing past you, sparkling lights everywhere, wind blowing in your face, pushing your hair, making it fly backwards. Then all of a sudden, you land on the ground with a big bump. And you find yourself outside of a really lovely little cottage with a big red door and a very shiny brass door knocker on it. You think that this little cottage must have a coal fire lit inside because you can see smoke coming from the chimney. Oh, how lovely. You take a look around you and you realise that you are in an underground world. In fact, it's a whole village deep underground. There are houses and little shops. There are people going about their business. One of them even says good morning to you. You can even see children playing in the park across the street. And there are even odd, funny looking little cars driving along too. You've never seen cars like them before. Very strange. Just as you're about to knock on the door, it opens and standing before you is a very posh, eccentric, English gentleman. Well, I say gentleman, but he's really a very tall, slim hair with little round yellow spectacles perched on his nose. 
He is wearing a large green spotted bow tie. And he has a very large pocket watch dangling from one of his pockets. He looks at you and he smiles and he says, Welcome to my humble abode, my dear friend. Let me introduce myself. I am Professor Harry Hopkins. How may I be of assistance to you today? You smile back and you say hello. He invites you into his little house, which looks an awful lot bigger on the inside. He asks you if you would like a nice cup of tea while you chat. He takes you into his lovely sitting room and then pops into the kitchen to make the tea. You take this opportunity to have a good look around his beautiful home and this beautiful room, which is full of lovely old antiques. And you notice he has a lot of photographs in silver frames dotted all around the room. And they are all photos of him. Photos of him climbing up a tree. Photos of him riding a surfboard. And there are even photos of him looking very dapper reading his books. The professor returns to his sitting room, pushing a beautiful ornate tea trolley on little wheels, which he stops next to his big overstuffed chair. And he says, Shall I pour the tea? You see the trolley is full of cakes and sandwiches and two rather lovely china cups and saucers too for your tea. He also has little china plates for the cakes and the sandwiches too. And you notice that there is a nice big cake covered with strawberry ice cream. The professor asks you to choose what you would like to eat. Anything at all, he says. So sit and chat with the Professor Harry Hoppins for a little while and get to know him. Ask him questions about his life and what he does. See what he says. After your little chat with the professor, you ask him about the very large pocket watch he has dangling. He tells you that this pocket watch is very special indeed. It can take you on magical adventures. He tells you that this special pocket watch can take you anywhere that you want to go. And he shows you how. First, he asks you, where would you like to go? So you tell him. So to make the watch work, 
He turns the hands around three times. He then jumps and spins in the air and he gives a little hop. Oh dear, but then he hits his head on the roof because he jumps too high. With a puff of smoke and what feels like a mini whirlwind, you are transported to another place. You feel a bit dizzy because of all of the spinning around. Phew! Round and around. The professor tells you to jump on his back so he can give you a piggyback ride. He then starts to move at a very fast pace. He doesn't walk. He hops at an incredible speed and an incredible height. And you find this utterly exhilarating and so much fun. The professor is also like a mini whirlwind, but he's very, very nice. The two of you arrive outside a very large mansion with amazing gardens. And this, the professor tells you, is Harry Hoppin's holiday home. It's where he himself likes to go on vacation. And he is so excited to show you his favorite place in the whole world. Which he refers to it as a rather delightful place. There are some very large sculptures in these magnificent gardens. Rabbits and hares are dotted all over the place. There are also some large ones of very large dogs because the professor says that they are his favourite animal. The first thing that you see is a sparkling crystal escalator and that takes you up to and inside this dazzling mansion. It takes you straight into a huge room with doorways on either side going back as far as the eye can see. You look up above you and you see a huge glass dome for a roof. You can see the sky. You can see the birds and the clouds. It's fantastic. This is a very special mansion. It's a place where each room takes you to a different magical land. Even to different planets if you want to. There is a sign above each door saying what that land is. One sign says, Land of the Pixies. Another one says, Land of the Prehistoric World. And yet another one saying, Land of the Giant Mice. There is even a very strange sign saying, Land of the Talking Furniture. Hmm. That might be worth a visit. Or maybe there is somewhere else that you would like to go with Harry Hoppins guiding you. The professor now asks you to choose a room to go into. So you walk up and down, trying to decide to pick which one you would like to go into most. Finally, you make your choice. You step through the door with Harry Hoppins to the room of your choice and you go inside. Where does it take you? Where do you want to go most of all? Now spend some time exploring the land you have chosen to visit and have some fun. See the sights. See the people, have fun with the professor, and most of all, bring back a souvenir from your trip.
Where did you go? What did you see? Who did you meet? Now it's time for you to return home. But first, you must thank Harry Hoppins, the professor, for being such an excellent guide and very possibly your new best friend. You thank him for the really tasty cup of tea and the beautiful cake. You thought it was very enjoyable and tasty. So if you like, you can stay here as long as you want. You can continue exploring, having a good look around this underground village with the professor as your guide. That would be fun. Now imagine yourself being back in the wide open space when you last began your adventure with Harry Hoppins. The sky is a beautiful blue with hardly any clouds at all and the sun is at its highest and the grass around you looks all velvety and soft. You notice the shimmering light in the distance again and you really hope it's the magical portal that takes you to see Harry. You get closer and the light suddenly shoots upwards and you find yourself being pulled into it. It is the doorway. Oh my, here we go again. How exciting. Wow. You find yourself sliding down on the underground water slide, circling round and round, going faster and faster. Oh, this is really great fun. Lots of colours are flashing past you, sparkling lights everywhere. The wind blowing in your face makes your hair fly backwards. It feels so much fun. You had forgotten just how good this really does feel. All of a sudden, you land on the ground with a little bump. But not quite as big as the last time. You must be perfecting this art of landing. You spot Harry's lovely little cottage with the big red door and very shiny brass door knocker on it. And you're so excited to be back here again. And just as you're about to knock on the door, Harry opens it and throws his arms out to you and says, I am so glad you came back to visit me. I have so much to share with you. Please come in, please come in. And he ushers you through into his lovely cottage. Harry tells you that you've arrived just in time. He tells you, that he's been working on a new invention and he really would like to show it to you. So he takes you into another room. It's a bit chaotic, this room. There's stuff everywhere, on the floor, hanging on the walls, and you don't even know what all this stuff is, but it does look really interesting, though. Harry takes you over to a very large bench and shows you what he's been working on. And it looks like a tiny bean bag. It's very squishy and soft. Harry tells you it's his sleep machine. And you look at him and you wonder if he's just lost his marbles. There's no way anyone could fit on this tiny little bean bag and have a sleep. But Harry doesn't notice the look on your face. He just carries on explaining to you what it is. As you listen to him, your eyes wander around the room, looking at all of the other strange things, and you wonder what they are. When Harry stops talking, he sees you looking at all of his other inventions, so he offers to show you some of them and tell you what they do. There is, what looks like to you anyway, a small wooden box on one of the other benches. Harry tells you to think of something you would like to eat. A chocolate bar, maybe, or a piece of fruit. But it has to be your very, very favourite. He says, Just imagine it in your mind's eye. Really see it. See every little detail. Taste it, even. So you do as he asks. After a minute, Harry tells you to open the box. 
you open the box and give a little gasp of delight because inside the box is your very favourite thing to eat. Oh my goodness me, how did he do that? Harry tells you you can even eat it if you want to. Next, he shows you a little bottle with a deep blue liquid inside it. Harry tells you that if you drink it, it will make you as tall as a giant. But he won't let you try that one because if you do, well, you maybe end up with your head sticking out of the top of his house and your arms and legs sticking out of the windows. We don't want that, do we? Harry says, giving a little laugh. And you think, no, we don't want that, but it might be fun trying. There are so many inventions and potions in Harry's room that you just know you will have to come back again to see all of them because there's just too many to see right now. Harry takes you back to the tiny little beanbag. He tells you it's not quite finished yet and Harry asks you if you would like to help him complete the sleep machine. Oh yes please, you tell him. So for a few moments, work with Harry and help him to finish his new invention. Now that you've helped Harry to finish his sleep machine, he asks you if you would like a drink and a slice of cake. And he will let you try out his new invention. After you've had that, how cool is that? Harry tells you to go back into the living room and he will fetch some lunch. The professor returns to the living room, pushing a beautiful ornate tea trolley on little wheels, which you've seen before. And he stops and says, Help yourself, my little apprentice. You see, the trolley is full of cakes and sandwiches and two rather lovely china cups. You remember them too. They are for your hot drinks. That's if you want one. He also has little china plates for cakes and sandwiches too. And you notice that there is a nice big cake covered with strawberry ice cream. He asks you to choose what you would like to eat. Anything at all, he says. Wow, and you thought you were just getting a slice of cake. Now that 
that the two of you have finished your huge lunch and a little chat, Harry tells you it's time to try out his new sleep machine. So you return to Harry's workshop and you both go over to the bench where the tiny beanbag is. Harry tells you that the tiny beanbag is so small that it can fit into your pocket. So you can take it with you wherever you go. And if you feel the need for a little nap, you can just pop it out of your pocket and it's there. Harry says that one day everyone will have one of these. Harry takes the tiny beanbag off the table and places it on the floor. He takes out his pocket watch, the one you've forgotten he had, and holds it in his hand. A quarter turn should do it, he says. You thought that this pocket watch could only take you to other places, magical places, but no, it does a lot more than that. Harry turns the dial in one of the hands on the pocket watch. Then something amazing happens. The tiny beanbag begins to grow. Bigger and bigger. Then just as suddenly as it started, it stops. It's now bigger than a normal beanbag. So big you feel like throwing yourself on it. Harry tells you to sit on it, so you do. And you just sink into it. It's so soft and cosy. It's the squishiest thing you have ever sat on. The beanbag gently begins to vibrate. It's like it's giving you a gentle back rub and it's taking away all of your worries. Then very slowly and very gently, it begins to rock from side to side. And you feel like having a great big sleep. Harry says you can if you want to. He doesn't mind. It's what it's for, he laughs. Your eyes are feeling heavy now and your body's feeling tired. So you close your eyes for just a minute. There's no harm in just resting them for a little while, is there? You take a deep breath in through your nose and gently blow it out from your mouth. You take another deep breath and then gently blow it out. And you feel very sleepy now. So tired, but so relaxed. You feel a gentle wave of sleepiness starting at your feet. You can feel your toes going to sleep. And it feels all warm and tingly and ever so soft. This beanbag is so amazing. You feel this soothing, gentle wave of sleepiness coming up your calves and your shins. You can feel it going up your thighs. And you think that maybe your legs have already gone to sleep. You feel very tired now. So sleepy, but so happy. And your eyelids feel so heavy. Being an inventor can be a very tiring occupation. The beautiful wave of sleepiness travels all the way up your body and down your arms and into your hands, making your body feel very, very heavy, very, very tired and very very sleepy. This gentle, warm wave of sleepiness travels up your face and over the top of your head and then down the back of your neck. Oh, you feel so tired now. So, so sleepy. And you feel nice and warm and snuggly on this very squishy beanbag. And just before you drift off to sleep, you think to yourself what a wonderful thing Harry has invented and so very pleased that he chose you to try it first. So just have a little sleep now 
you can always help Harry again tomorrow. So for now, night-night, sleep tight. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful, lush green forest with the most amazing trees, tall trees, short trees, and they smell beautiful. It's so fresh and clean, and the air is crisp. And as you walk along, you feel a great sense of peace, almost like you're floating on air, and the weather is perfect. You hear the birds singing in the trees, and it makes you feel very happy. It's then that you notice that you are on a little path, so you decide to follow it. You don't know where it will lead, but you decide to go anyway. After walking for a little while, you find yourself standing in front of a cave. But you didn't see it at first because there are bushes everywhere. But as you got closer, you could see the wide open entrance. You wonder what's inside it, so you decide to explore it. You enter the cave. It's a bit dark at first, but as your eyes adjust, it becomes a lot clearer and you find you can see perfectly well. And as you walk deeper into the cave, you see lights shining in the distance. And you follow the lights to see what it is. As the cave opens up a bit more, the light gets brighter and it begins to sparkle and shine. And it's then you see a little girl sitting nearby at some sort of table and it's made of a huge sparkly rock. She's dressed like a princess in a beautiful blue gown that shimmers as she moves. She even has a tiara on her head and it shines so brightly. It shines just like the stars do on a crystal clear night. She looks up and she sees you. She smiles at you and tells you that her name is Connie and that she is indeed a princess. Wow, a real live princess. How cool is that? She tells you that she is Connie, the crystal princess, and she lives far away on another planet with her family and her friends. But this cave is where she likes to be more than anything. As you look around you, you realise that you are in a very large, beautiful crystal cavern. And the cavern is vast. It's so huge, you cannot see where it begins or even where it ends. And there are crystals adorning every wall, even the roof and the floor. There are so many crystals that you cannot recognize them all. And they sparkle and they shine so brightly. It's just wonderful. There are so many beautiful colors everywhere with the light. It's like you are standing inside a rainbow. The light in this cavern is dazzlingly bright but it doesn't hurt to look at it. The light is all over your body, touching your skin, touching your hair, even touching your face. And it feels so soft and warm. And Connie, the crystal princess, is lit up like a perfect rainbow of color. She smiles at you and asks you if you would like to see some of her crystals. And she tells you to come and sit next to her and she will show you them. Connie says that crystals are her friends. 
And you find this a bit odd because you thought the crystals, well, they were just coloured stones. Connie laughs. No, she says. They are alive with light and beauty. And she tells you that crystals can help you with almost anything you need. She picks up a beautiful pink coloured crystal and she tells you that this one is called Rose Quartz and it can help you to send love out to anyone you want to, even the whole world if you want. Connie places the crystal in your hand and tells you to hold it tight and as you do you begin to feel the crystal start to vibrate. It starts to feel warm in your hand and it tingles, but in a nice way. And it's then that you notice you can hear a little voice in your head. It's the voice of the crystal. It's talking to you. Can you hear it? Wow, you are stunned. The crystal is actually speaking to you. It's just a little whisper though, but you can hear it, can't you? What is it saying to you? The crystal also tells you that Connie is their best friend and she takes care of them every day. She comes to see them and talk to them all the time and the crystals love it when Connie comes to visit them. The crystal tells you that they go deep within the earth and there are lots and lots of them. And there are many different kinds of crystals in all different shapes and sizes and many, many amazing colours. Because the crystals love Connie so much, they let her make jewellery with them. She makes bracelets, necklaces, earrings, rings and all kinds of other things. Connie says that when you wear a piece of jewellery made out of crystal, or maybe just carry a piece around with you in your pocket, you carry all the goodness of the crystal. The purpose of some crystals is to protect you. Some offer giving and receiving love. Some of them are for helping you to sleep well at night. And there are lots and lots of other reasons to carry crystals with you because they are truly beautiful and they are alive. So for a few moments, just stay with Connie and the crystals. Talk to them. Find out what they can be used for. See if you can identify any of them. Run your hands over them and see what they feel like and how do they make you feel. And Princess Connie says she will teach you too to make things with crystals, just you and her and the crystals. So for a few moments, just stay with Connie and the crystals.
was nice, wasn't it? Talking to the beautiful crystals with Princess Connie. But it's time for you to return home now. But then, Connie asks you if you would like to stay with her in the crystal cave tonight. She tells you there is an extra bed for you if you would like. And you say you would like that very much. You are quite tired now, so Princess Connie leads you over to your very own bed. And it's amazing. It's made entirely of crystals. And it has a lovely big squishy quilt on it with two enormously soft pillows. And it's all for you. You climb up onto your nice soft bed and you snuggle down and say goodnight to Princess Connie and the beautiful, sparkling crystals. Princess Connie says goodnight back and goes off to her own bedroom. And it's quiet now, but you can hear very soft and very beautiful singing. It's the crystals. The crystals are singing you to sleep. How wonderful. You whisper thank you to the crystals and gently close your eyes. And remember, you can come back here any time you want. And maybe when you wake up in the morning, you might want to start collecting some crystals of your very own. You feel so happy and so peaceful, but very, very tired and sleepy. So rest now, surrounded by the beautiful singing crystals. Just rest. Now imagine that you are in the most wonderful garden walking down a very pretty path with lots and lots of flowers. They are very pretty flowers and they're in all the colours of the rainbow. There are pink flowers, blue flowers, there are yellow flowers, there are great big purple flowers and the biggest orange flowers you have ever seen. You wonder what they are because you've never seen them before. You continue to walk along this pretty path and feel your arms and legs gently relaxing. Even your feet are relaxing. And the ground, well, it feels all squidgy and soft, but it's not wet, just nice and soft. As you walk along this winding path, you see rabbits and squirrels playfully chasing each other and running in and out of the undergrowth. They don't see you at all. They run under the bushes and in and out of the flowers. They're having such fun. And you watch them and you smile to yourself. They seem so happy just playing together and being with each other. You can hear bees flying lazily from flower to flower, collecting the pollen to make for their dinner. You see big fat bumblebees landing gently on the flowers and you wonder how on earth they can fly. They are so big but they have such tiny wings. But you feel so happy 
and safe in this wonderful and special garden. You come to the end of the winding path and you find yourself standing in front of the biggest tree you have ever seen. It looks like a very old and very large oak tree with the most splendid branches reaching upwards to the beautiful blue sky, reaching out to feel the warmth of the sun on its luscious green leaves. This is a very special tree. As you look at it, you notice it has a pretty yellow door in the side of this magical old tree. So you turn the handle of the door and you go inside. There are little lanterns hanging all around the room you are in. They look so warm and inviting. And as your eyes adjust to the light, you see that there are many doors all around the room. Fat ones, thin ones, wooden ones. There are even some round ones too. You see a winding spiral staircase with an oddly shaped door at the top of the stairs. So you climb the stairs. And when you reach the top, you look at the door and you wonder what on earth could be on the other side. So you decide to take a look. You step through the door and there to greet you is a very lovely fairy with the most loving smile on her face. And she tells you that her name is Lily. She has blonde hair, so blonde it's almost white. She is wearing a beautiful silver dress and her wings too are silver and they flutter gently behind her. She lives here inside this beautiful, magical oak tree. This is her home. You say hello to her and tell her your name. She tells you that lots of fairies live here. They work here too. And she asks you if you would like to explore it with her. Well, obviously you say yes. In this room, there are many doors too. And Lily asks you, which door would you like to go through first? You can choose any door you want. Which one will it be? Do you think you may find the room where the fairies make their shoes? Or will it be the sewing room? where they make all of their clothes? Will it be the big kitchen where they are making the dinner for this evening? Or maybe you will find the great hall where all the younger fairies are learning to fly. They are testing out their new wings. You decide to open the big arched door first and you see that you are in the great hall and you see many fairies, many, many young fairies, testing the new wings. A few of them are even lifting off the floor and gently rising. As you watch them, you begin to feel your shoulders start to tingle. And when you look to see why, you see you have grown the most perfect set of wings on your back. And they are silver, just like lilies. And you can feel them fluttering gently behind you. You realise that you can wriggle them and make them flap. And it's so much fun. As you flap your wings gently, you are astonished because you look down and you see that you have left the floor. And you're hovering just like the other fairies. This is fantastic. You have wings and you can fly just like Lily. Lily tells you to follow her. So you flap your wings gently and move around the room. Lily introduces you to some of the other fairies who are very excited to meet you. 
So for a few moments, spend some time with Lily and the young fairies flying around the great hall. You laugh as you whoosh through the air with your new wings. You think to yourself that this is so much fun. You swoop high up, almost to the ceiling, then whoosh back down again. You fly low to the floor, then soar high up again. You love having wings. This is just wonderful. So for just a little while, fly with the fairies. Watch what they do, do what they do, but most of all, have some fun. That was so much fun. But your wings, though, are beginning to get tired now. And they're starting to feel a little bit heavy on your back. So it's time to head back home. You say goodbye to Lily and her friends. And they tell you that they hope you will come back again really soon. And when you do... They will show you what is behind the other doors. Lily then asks you, instead of going home, would you like a sleepover with her and her friends? Well, of course you would. Lily takes you to a very special bedroom. It's filled with flowers and beautiful crystals, and it has an enormous bed just for you. As you get comfortable on your bed, Lily sings you a little lullaby to help you sleep. She has a very lovely voice, but she doesn't sing with words, just beautiful sounds. It's so lovely and so peaceful. And your eyes have already closed. The sound of Lily's voice is just so beautiful. Just before you drift off to sleep, you thank her for what she has shown you today, and especially for the lovely silver wings. You really, 
really enjoyed that. Lily is a very kind fairy. And we should always be kind to each other and to all living creatures. Just like Lily does. But for now, breathe in gently through your nose. And slowly sigh the breath out. Again, breathe in gently. And slowly just sigh the breath out. One last time. Gently breathe in. And slowly sigh the breath out. And now just sleep. Just rest. Night night.